Hang Out with Ken, Episode 2. Um, thank you so much again uh, for joining us, like I said. Uh, keep uh, in mind that you can ask us questions with the hashtag Ken's Hangout uh, via Twitter, YouTube, uh, Facebook, and also on the events page itself on uh, Ken's Crow, Ken Crow's uh, uh, Google Plus account. So um, I'm Gabe via Mazar, social media strategist here at InsideSales.com. And uh, so yeah, so let's uh, introduce our guest speakers. We have here with us. Jill Rowley, uh, Social Selling Evangelist Enablement at Oracle. Welcome, Jill. Hi, Gabe. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for joining us. Uh, up next, we have uh, Jamie Shanks. He is currently a managing partner at Sales for Life. Welcome, uh, Jamie. Hey, Gabe. How are you? Doing good. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. And last but not least, we have president and founder of InsideSales.com, Ken Crow. How are you doing, Ken? I'm great. Ready to jump in. Ready to jump in. Great. So let's go ahead and um, uh, jump in with a few slides that um, to start off the discussion. Um, one second here. Okay, Ken. So the the, the topic today was going to be is going to be uh, social selling. So Ken, why don't you um, enlighten us a little bit on uh, the problem with social selling? Great. And, and we're just going to go quickly through a few quick slides. And then uh, light up the discussion, everybody. So, right now we've we have done a recent research study that was just published, um, several different locations all over the web, and we found some interesting things. What we found with uh, there is a bit of a problem with social selling, and that is this: we're using it more than we know how to use it. If that makes sense, and it's climbing the chart steadily on effectiveness, but we're still finding that we're using it more then we are effective in using it. So let's move to that next slide, Gabe. What, what this is, this, this research study was the uh, 27 lead generation methodologies that um, we, we ran in front of a, about, well, several uh, hundred thousand companies, had several hundred responses, and we found, uh, can you put that slide back up, Gabe? Is that on the screen right now? Yeah, so. Uh, okay, there we go. This one? No, the first one you were at. So, yeah, uh, yeah that one right there. So, okay, this one, all right. Yeah, there we go. The <laughs> methods used, okay? So the, the company website is definitely the first and foremost resource now for all marketing. Right behind that is email and trade shows. Inside sales is ranked fourth on the methods being used. And LinkedIn is right behind inside sales, Facebook after that, and so on. So I won't go through them all. These are the 27 different methodologies. Uh, go to the second slide there, Gabe. Okay. There we go. And, and what we did with this quadrant model is we showed where they're being effective. And right now, the top right core quadrant is where you want to focus. The trade shows, email, and company website, those are definitely uh, the mainstay. Inside sales, very, very strong for value and, and effectiveness, but not being used quite as much. The thing I want to talk about, though, is the social media. So if you'll notice in the bottom right quadrant, you'll see LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter, and those are being used a ton, but they're not being used as effectively. So that's the, something we want to hit the next slide after that one, Gabe. Okay, and what this slide is, is, is it ranks in fact, let's skip this one. This is a little bit too complex. Let's go to the next one there. Uh, this, this is the article that appeared in Marketing Profs. Again, they have 610,000 subscribers. They just published this a little bit ago, and it hit the news wires. Uh, a lot of interesting discussion, basically. And uh, what I want to do is, is let's, let's ask some questions. First of all, Jill, from your perspective, would you give us a definition of what social selling is? What, what how would you define it? Sure, I'd be happy to define social selling. So really, social selling is very simply technology-enabled research, technology-enabled networking, technology-enabled relationship building, and technology-enabled collaboration. Um, I've actually developed a framework for social selling, and I brought that framework to Oracle and there are really four pillars of social selling. 
and it's it's more elaborately using social networks like LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook to find your buyers, to listen and relate to your buyers, to connect and engage with your buyers, and ultimately to amplify your buyers. And not only your buyers in the buying committee, but the sphere of influence. So who do your buyers trust? Who are they connected to? What content are they reading and sharing? And so that's really the first pillar of social selling. And uh, I, I won't tell you all four, but I'll tell you the second one because it's very critical. And the second pillar is content. And it's helping sales professionals leverage content, whether it be OPC, yeah, you know me, I'm down with other people's content, um, or whether it be your company branded content, but using content to build trust, to establish subject matter expertise, to, in, to educate and inform the buyer. And so those are the first two pillars of the social selling framework at Oracle. And uh, really social selling is just a complement to what sales professionals are already doing today. It's just new channels. It's really not some like radically different methodology or process. It's really integrated into what they already do today. Wonderful. Jamie, what would you add to that? The only thing that I'd add, and that was fantastic, Jill, the only thing that I would add is that you have to first believe that the buyer has changed. If you fundamentally believe that your buyer can conduct a majority of their buying process, and there's different statistics out there, 57%, 70%, but if you, could, if you believe that they can conduct a majority of their buying process without you, Mr. and Mrs. Sales Rep, then what social selling is, is meeting your buyer where your buyer begins their buying journey. I personally love using social selling at the top of the sales funnel, so you're meeting that buyer where the buyer is beginning their due diligence, while they're still at status quo and you're trying to create a priority shift and get them to think a little bit differently about the way that they do business. That's all it is. You're, you're meeting them where they're hanging out already, which is online. That makes sense. You know, in my uh, structure behind social selling, I start with a strategy first to build awareness, then move it to interest, then educate to need. And like you said, that always starts at the top of the funnel. I like to bridge from, from social media to more assertive media as you get about halfway through the interest model and you're starting to talk need. When you get to need, that's where you want to bridge it and, and enter the sales funnel. But, but I, I, I've seen impact from the social media channels like I've never seen before. I think LinkedIn is the most powerful tool ever invented for sales if we use it effectively and some of the other media is coming on pretty strong. Do you agree with that, Jamie? How would you rank the social media in terms of tools being used out there? Well, I, and, and before I address that, I wanted to address one of the points that you made. And uh, one of the, the core pieces that I think sales professionals forget is you mentioned that you love to drive from social media to more an assertive measure, such as the phone, later on in that buying process. For myself, there's a section of the buying process I call the dead zone, which is at the tail end of the buying process. You're on the five-yard line. The buyer is uh, not returning your calls. You've already sent a proposal or a demo has been conducted, and it's been weeks or months have gone by. This is where you can share content, as Jill just mentioned. Content is king. I'm constantly sharing content to keep you know, that gives and gets. Just keep the relationship moving forward. So to answer your second question about the effectiveness of LinkedIn, it's the 800-pound gorilla. But also remember that LinkedIn is a tool within the greater whole of, of social selling. It is one tool amongst other things within social selling, but absolutely the most powerful. Gotcha. Jill, how do you weigh in on on the different media of social and, and, and you know sort of maybe even a percentage of of where social selling is, is occurring based on the four or five different social media? Yeah, so I think it depends on where your buyers are. And that, that has to be the first question you ask yourself when you are determining whether you're going to be on social. Um, it, it starts with where are my buyers? And what to Jamie said, you know, be where your buyers are offline at events. And, and it, it rubs me so wrong when sales reps go to events and they just work the booth. 
they're not in the sessions <laughs> learning where their buyers are learning. They're not being where their buyers are at the event. They're sitting behind the booth waiting for the buyer to come and get a pitch. And so it starts with where are your buyers? Are they on LinkedIn? Well, they better be. Because to me, if you're not on LinkedIn, you don't exist. And so LinkedIn is absolutely where every B2B professional needs to be and every B2C professional. It is the largest professional network with the most highest quality data and relevant insights about your buyers, their experience, their interests, their personalities, and such. And so then for me with, with Oracle, it's Twitter. Twitter is number two. The buyers are on Twitter. The thought leaders, the experts, the analysts, they're on Twitter. So you want to be not only where your buyers are, but where the people who influence your buyers are. And so are they on Twitter? Are they on Facebook? Are they on Quora? Are they on Pinterest? And it all starts foundationally with the question of where are your buyers? I love that. 100%. Okay, thank you, Angel. And we have a question here we wanted to uh, Jamie to address. So, uh, sales reps are asking, you know, how do you balance your time between um, spending time finding uh, prospects on social media networks such as Twitter and LinkedIn, and how much of, of you know outbound calling would, would you do or or, out, or, out, or trade shows? I mean, where is the balance? I mean, how thin is that line? Let's uh, have uh, Jamie answer that question then for a few minutes. Sure, and this came to one of the points that when I was reading Ken's document, I was thinking about. The reality is one of the best instant tools for driving net new opportunities is the telephone. I, it's unstoppable. If I need an opportunity, if I have a, if I have been tasked to generate a net new opportunity a day, telephone is amazing. But what I find with social selling is it's developing a long-term strategy. I'm building a personal brand. I'm demonstrating that I'm an influencer. I'm insightful, and then I'm somebody that you can trust. To do a fix, uh, a five, six, seven-figure deal. So um, you know, I, I absolutely, absolutely see it as a balance where you're maybe using social selling for about thirty to sixty minutes a day, and it's not detracting from your existing sales process. It's only amplifying the long-term opportunity. Thank you, Jill. Go ahead. What do you think on that? Uh, the phone point. Yeah, I actually am going to respectfully disagree with Jamie <laughs> that the best place to find a net new opportunity is the phone. I actually um, was on a call yesterday with Todd Forsythe. He's a VP of marketing at EMC. And prior to that, I'd worked with Todd when he was at salesforce.com. And prior to that, he had spent seven years at Oracle. And we were talking about the social business and social selling transformation that's occurring at EMC and they implemented the third pillar of my social selling framework first and that pillar is social listening from a sales point of view and the best place to find new opportunities is by listening to the social channels for early buying signals and they Todd shared a stat with me that they went from cold calling, warm calling via doing research via LinkedIn before calling, so that's, I would say, warm calling or smart calling, to social listening, and the conversion rate from lead to accepted by the field on the phone generated leads was 2%. The conversion rate from lead to accepted by the field on the social listening was 18. 18x. Wow. So I think the best place to find net new opportunities is by implementing social listening from a sales point of view. This is not your marketing team listening for sentiment or people complaining about yeah. your product or service. This is early stage buying signals and, and that requires some investment in not only technology but in um, uh, uh, re, re, reallocating resources and this is Ken where we talk about the problem with social selling is there's a whole lot of mindset shift that has to change there's a whole lot of skill sets that have to be learned and there's new enabling toolkits and so you social selling without executive level sponsorship will fail because just as you noticed Ken in terms of the data people are using it but it's not effective 
And that's because there's no strategy around how to do this. And so without a strategy, you will fail. I think you're exactly right, Jill, and, and I agree with you. Uh, the original question was the best way to find prospects and opportunities to begin engaging with. And I, I think what you said is profound. You said social selling from a sales perspective in terms of listening. You're listening for those buying signals. We're not looking for tire kickers. We're not looking for awareness and engagement. We're listening for buying signals that exist out there in the marketplace. And that is an incredible place to start. The problem with the phone is it's either one of two things. It's a response mechanism to a buying signal you've already received through some other media, or it's a, it's a first engagement tool. And it, unless you've used LinkedIn or another methodology to increase your awareness of the buying signals that are happening, you're going to go in cold. And that relates to the whole discussion we had last week on cold calling. A strict definition of cold calling is going in without information and without relationship and without awareness, no buying signals. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about warm calling with strategic intelligence and like you said, Jill, specifically looking for buying signals that are already underway. And I, I think you know you meant that, Jamie, because you your whole practice is based on that very thing out there looking and engaging buying signals. Is that correct? A hundred percent. I was probably the biggest advocate on the planet to LinkedIn signal as an example. What I meant is if if I'm a sales professional and I'm most sales professionals are are being looked at talk time and number of dials, this is just the reality of being a sales professional. From an instant gratification or sorry, time to return on investment. If it, if I needed a meeting today and I have no social presence, then many times the telephone and this is this is the short term thinking, the telephone provides that instant gratification. But you as a sales professional that need to build a long term practice without social selling you're dead in the water and that's where I find social selling trumps everything because you're building this long-term perpetual lead generation machine that's what I meant it's more of the time to to ROI versus uh, the effectiveness of yeah well and, and, and I, I agree with that what I have found like I said is we always start with the existing media that's most effective then bridge it to more assertive media as we finish the sales process and it usually moves you, means you move the phone and then you move to face to face if you can do it yeah. because face to face is two and a half times more powerful than phone now the problem is phone is seven times more likely to to cover the ground quickly with making contacts now Jill you you, you really in, uh, got me interested in these four pillars do you mind taking a quick minute and just quickly review them so that so that our folks have some context what you're talking about there this is very interesting Sure, absolutely. So the first pillar, I'll repeat, is using social networks like LinkedIn and Twitter to find your buyers, to listen and relate to your buyers, to connect and engage with your buyers, and ultimately to amplify your buyers. And not just your buyers in the buying committee, let's not get single-threaded, but their sphere of influence. Who do they trust? Who do they know? Who do they um, retweet? Who are they connected to? So it's find, listen, relate, connect, engage, and amplify your buyers and your buyer's sphere of influence. That's pillar number one. Number two, content, the big C. And I recommend sharing content on a 411 framework. So for every six pieces of content, and this is generally, please don't go counting your content shares for, you know, for exactly this model. Oh my God, I didn't do the 411 specifically, but it's four pieces, third party, thought leadership, non-Oracle branded or non-insidesales.com branded content, one piece of Oracle branded content, hopefully it's edutaining, hopefully it's visually appealing, we're working on that, people. Um, hopefully, it's snackable bites. Um, so content. And the reason, okay, the reason of all of this, people buy from people they know, they like, and they trust. And you're using content to allow people to get to know you and your subject matter expertise, to get to like you because you're helping. You're not selling. 
and to trust you, <laughs> to trust that you know your shit, that you know how to help them solve their business problems with your technology and services and your best practices and your people, but building that trust through content. Third Great. pillar. Okay. Third pillar, you ready? I'm Third ready. <laughs> Social listening from a sales perspective. When I was at Eloqua, I, the, the, okay, Matt Dixon and Brent Adamson, the authors of the Challenger Sale, asked me a question. They said, what percentage of your pipeline, Jill Rowley, is generated via social selling? And I said, oh, guys, the better question is what percentage of Eloqua's pipeline is generated from my social selling? So social listening, I would have in TweetDeck the columns. I would have Eloqua. I would have our competitors. I would have marketing automation, lead scoring, lead nurturing, marketing measurement, marketing ROI. Um, so I would have all of these terms that related to our platform that I would listen to conversations about. So social listening from a sales rep perspective. And then the fourth pillar, come on. We got to measure what matters. We got to measure. And in the beginning, the metrics aren't going to be what really matters because it's going to be tough to tie social to revenue day one. It's a journey. So measure progressively. So in the beginning, you're going to want to measure size of networks of your reps. So connections on LinkedIn, um, uh, followers on Twitter, volume of content shared and then amplified by others. And the reality is and the problem with companies today in being able to do this is guess what they measure? Dials, connects, meetings, pipeline. They don't measure social metrics. So guess what? Your reps' behaviors will not change until you start to measure them on social activity. In fact, that's – yeah. go ahead. Let me just jump in real quick. The measure I found is key. As soon as you measure and make visual, things go up 20% almost the same day. Now, Jamie, you, you're in this whole world, especially LinkedIn sort of your, your, your focus, and I've seen incredible things with LinkedIn. We've got to cover a lot of ground here, but, but Jamie, it sounds like you wanted to respond to Jill for a moment, and then I have a question for you. Well, and I'll give you, a, a, and Jill's 100% right around the, the KPIs and the measurement, and I'll give a simple tip or tactic that a sales manager can use to understand the power of, of, uh, of LinkedIn as an example. What people don't understand about LinkedIn is it, it covers both uh, the opportunity, or sorry, we'll call it the account source and as well the opportunity source. And what I mean by that is LinkedIn is one of the few monsters out there that it competes against uh, a data.com or uh, a Hoover's as an example as a new source of data. So if I'm a sales manager in your accounts field, if you're a Salesforce.com user or an Oracle user or an SAP user, in your accounts field, make sure that you're keeping track of where are we getting our data from. Do we purchase it from lists? Do we meet them at trade shows? One of those drop downs need to be LinkedIn. So you're attributing an, uh, an account source to LinkedIn. And then, of course, in the opportunities field, you're doing the same thing. Did you meet him at a trade show? Did he make a cold call? Was it from an email campaign? And one of those needs to be LinkedIn. You can go as far as we have of breaking down, was it a social listening LinkedIn conversation versus was it a proactive message? Was it a, whatever it was within LinkedIn? The purpose is that LinkedIn has two powers. It actually helps you drive net new accounts into your database you didn't have before. And as well, it allows you as a source of creating opportunities. So when you're defining social selling, you need to define it on both ends. You're putting opportunities in or uh, companies into your database you didn't have before, and you're creating opportunities. So it has kind of a double whammy of power. So that's all that I wanted to, to add. That, that's awesome. Now, give, give a, bit, a bit of an overview, Jamie, on some of the really cool uh, strategic, uh, strategy and tactics that you're using in the LinkedIn world for social selling specifically, you know, and, and yeah, just high level. Yeah, one but second. we have about five minutes left, Jamie. So you know. Real yeah, and, and, and the, <laughs> one of 
my absolute favorite, 50% of every net new meeting that our company and every client we've ever trained that is implemented is generating net new opportunities with what we call social leverage. Jill, uh, Jill likes my new term of social leverage. Social leverage is, is dead simple. You have and you need to understand that people buy stories. Stories are what sell. You're going to turn your existing client success stories into actual stories. LinkedIn does an amazing job of actually looking around that around the sphere of influence of a particular story. So inside sales.com is my story. Working with Ken, doing a great job. There are Ken's and inside sales.com's partners, vendors, people that Ken knows, competitors. These are all organizations and people that socially surround Ken and inside sales.com. By using tactics like their followers, or you can, there's a whole mapping system in LinkedIn of, of competitors, and as well, you can, there's a references section around Ken Krog himself. You can understand his working life and everyone he's connected to. All of a sudden, when I begin developing relationships in LinkedIn based in that sphere of influence called social leverage, your opportunities skyrocket because you're telling a story to the first people that are interested in actually hearing that story. My favorite within LinkedIn, by far. All Jill, right, thank you. Jill, let's take a minute on, uh, I mean, you, you, you've had some incredible experience uh, in, in the evangelism side of things. That's an, a fun title. It's a powerful title. You know, I think it originates back in the early days with Apple and, you know, Guy Kawasaki and, and the power behind that word. But, but talk to us about, you know, specifically your role at Oracle and previously at Eloqua. And, and give us a little bit more details on, on the impact you've been able to make. It, it, it's created ripples throughout the whole industry. Tell us a little bit more, would you? Sure. I, I mean, I really love what I do. And I, I figured out as I was approaching turning 40 what my purpose was. And, and I'm real clear on my purpose, and it's two things. It's to enrich other people's careers, and it's to elevate the profession of sales. And I think that, you know, we're, we've, we've seen – some some good shifts. Uh, Daniel Pink has a great book out uh, to sell as human, and we're we're starting to change the the perception of of the salesperson. But the evangelism is because you can't teach someone new skills and give them new tools until they understand the why. Why do social selling is all about the buying behavior has changed. 92% of B2B buyers start their search on the web. 82% of the world's online population can be reached via social networks. The power of peer-to-peer -peer has never been greater. And what, what companies need to wake up and realize is nobody cares if you are number one in this or number one in that. What people care about is how you sure. make them number one how you make their company better, how you make their people better, how you improve their processes. So the evangelism is all about the mindset shift that has to occur in businesses to understand that buyer to company trust, buyer to Oracle, 33%. Buyer to buyer, peer to peer, colleague to colleague, 92%. This is a buyer-driven world, and I am so happy that the power has been taken away from the big honking companies and been brought down to the people. And so the evangelism is really important because that is the mindset shift. Beliefs lead to behaviors. And so I am in charge of not only evangelizing but enabling. So when, that, when my people... And it is so gratifying at Oracle every day, multiple emails, sales reps having that aha moment. They listened to the why. They understand the what. And now they are ready for the how. And so enabling them, once they have the aha moment and the mindset shift, with building buyer-centric LinkedIn and Twitter profiles, joining groups where your buyers are, the art of a LinkedIn invite. It's not about you and your meeting and your pipeline and your quota. It's about them congratulating, complimenting, relating, connecting. So it 
that's the evangelism and then the enablement. And the reason why I continue to evangelize outside of Oracle is because of my purpose of elevating the profession of sales. And so I can't keep this locked up inside of Oracle. It is my duty to help all of the sales profession learn how to be better at helping people buy, not selling. I love that. Thank you, Jill. And we're, we, I, I've decided, and I can do this because it's my hangout, right? We're going to go a little longer, <laughs> right. guys. All right. I, I, I don't get Jamie Shanks and Jill Rowley on a hangout very often. So, so if you guys all want to hang up, but you know, one minute ago, go ahead. But hang with me a little longer because we're going to we're going to get to some meat here, and we want some takeaways. But, um, but you said something, Jill, that reminded me. Uh, you know. When Sales 2.0 came out, that was the big buzzword. I was afraid of using it. I bought the original domain first, and then I thought, well, wait a minute. Then 3.0 is going to come out, and it's going to be obsolete. <laughs> but I, I did an analysis of, of CRM. CRM 1.0, or actually CRM 0.0 was a Rolodex, wasn't it? It was the Rolodex that the salesperson brought to the company, and the problem was when they left the company, the, the Rolodex went with them. And the company realized, wait a minute, we're stupid. So they, they said, okay, we're going to roll out CRM, which captures all the leads, and then we're going to own the Rolodex. And then the salespeople said, wait a minute, now we're stupid. So they came out and said, we're going to do social media, and we're going to share our Rolodex with the company, and we're going to keep it with us when we go. And that's the magic. It's now become, it's like Covey used to say, we were dependent on the reps, then we became independent, but now we're interdependent. The, the social media keeps all of our network in the cloud, and we still share it with the companies as sales teams, and, and, and that's a synergy that I think has never been duplicated. Well, here's where I want to go for the last part of this discussion. We've got two main audiences online with us today. We've got management on up, and we've got frontline producers who've got to t have some things to take away. So what I want to do right now, and we'll start with you, Jamie, is I want to I want you to give us some quick, fast, immediate hits, takeaways, first for the front line. Okay, so I want you to think social selling. What do I do right now to go be productive today? I want to know why and how. We don't have a lot of time for excuse me, why and what. We don't have a lot of time for how. We can turn to your cool materials for that, but social selling at the front lines first. Why should they do it? What are some cool things they can do right now? Okay, uh, why you should do it is very simple. To Ken's point uh, about the database, it's your Rolodex that stays with you for the rest of your life. The more connections you have, the more opportunities you're giving yourself long term. So a real simple, we have a 12-step uh, process in which you're supposed to go through in 30 to 60 minutes a day. I'm going to give you a couple quick highlights. One of the few things that you, that sales professionals forget to do is they forget to actually review who's reviewing their own LinkedIn profile every single day. You actually have a voicemail box within LinkedIn and it's called who's viewing my profile. Within that there are people that are engaging in your content looking at you for various reasons. Every single one of those people that makes sense that are part of your buyer persona or that are connected to people that can do business for you or with you, you need to be converting them from second or third degree connections to first degree, giving yourself a higher probability of your content being seen, thus being engaged, thus being put in the hands of decision makers that will help you. The second other tip, at the very top of your LinkedIn profile, there's a little tiny flag. That flag is called notifications. It's a 360 degree view of your entire life within LinkedIn. Everyone that is engaging, liking, commenting, sharing, endorsing you, you need to be cognizant of the fact that you go into each one of those subcategories and look at each one because it's only showing you those in your first degree. But hidden behind that wall are second and third degree people that are engaging, liking, commenting, sharing on your content, which you can easily convert again from second and third degree to first degree with a very pointed, customized, articulate invite. By doing that, you're, the probability that they're seeing you and your content starts to spiral. And this is the very beginnings of something that you can do that is social selling that will create a snowball. That's beautiful. Jill, same thing. 
What takeaways for the front lines do you recommend people be focusing on so they can make impact today from this little hangout? Sure. So from the front line, I, I, I've actually engaged Sales for Life and Jamie Shanks at Oracle to help us build our how-to training program. And so not only do I use his training, and, and we've, we've re-recorded all of it, Oracle branded, and um, rebranded all of the assets to have the Oracle brand on it, but um, I recommend his documents around nine steps to optimizing your LinkedIn profile. Um, there's also a document 42 inside sales tips for getting the most out of LinkedIn. And so, you know, I, I told you I'm down with OPC, other people's content. And so I would recommend visiting Sales for Life. There's plenty of others too. Um, just go do a Google search on social selling resources and there's lots of great free resources. But first and foremost, what you have to do, optimize your social profiles for your buyer. If you optimize your social profile for the recruiter, quota crusher, expert negotiator, <laughs> president's club, you will get recruiters, you will not get buyers who will know you, who will like you, and who will trust you. And so first and foremost, your personal professional brand invest in you it will stay with you beyond your current position yeah. and so that I wouldn't do anything I wouldn't connect to another individual until you look at your profiles from the lens of your buyer that is yeah. absolutely brilliant Jill uh, I don't know if I've heard that idea before I should have oh my gosh you're right <laughs> who are we targeting well I, I want to recommend also that in fact uh, Jamie and I we did that ebook together, boy, months ago on that 42 ideas. Uh, no, a that, year ago. That's oh my how gosh, <laughs> <laughs> Alzheimer's here. Um, let, let's let's keep driving that. Um, my Forbes article is number two. I had no idea of all my articles I've ever done on 27 LinkedIn tips. It's going crazy. Yeah. Um, but but let's talk now about management on up. Where do they go for some immediate takeaways from today? What do you recommend? Jamie, let's start with you. I, I, the first thing that you need to do, uh, other than a social media policy, which some organizations need to put together, but above and beyond that, Jill talked about metrics. If you don't understand the value and the return on investment of social selling, and, and I'll talk to companies all day long, and they'll say, my sales reps are on LinkedIn. Of course they know what they're doing. What are they doing on LinkedIn? It doesn't matter that you're on it. It's what are you doing? For ourselves, I like to measure four fundamental metrics. And sales managers that are on this call, write these down and make sure you're capturing this information. And I recognize that LinkedIn and your existing CRM are not intertwined. It might be a manual process, but this will at least help you understand the return on investment. Number one, network growth. Take a baseline measurement of everybody's LinkedIn and Twitter accounts to date and measure it whether it's weekly or monthly and start to understand by sharing content what is that doing for their particular database the second piece is engagement especially the engagement around your own content but to Jill's point sharing your own content will do nothing unless you're sharing other people's content if you're not if you're not demonstrating insight outside of your own organization but are people liking commenting sharing there are tools that can do this and LinkedIn's new button that comes out after Labor Day will actually show you in three degrees of separation who's viewing, commenting and sharing your own content is right there on your home screen. Number three is leads, opportunities, however you want to measure it. Is it marketing qualified leads, sales qualified leads? Jill does a fantastic job. She's talked about putting campaign codes on, on some of the uh, events that they're doing. You'll know instantaneously and uh, or if you're putting an opportunity source button in uh, in your opportunity section and then the last is it's just asking people is it attributing to revenue but if you don't understand the metrics all rest is a mood point I love it Jill same question yeah How do managers take away some great stuff today uh, great question and and if you haven't gotten the religion if you don't have the data that supports why invest in social selling, let's start there. So, for example, go get Aberdeen Group's report on social selling. 
Go get For Forrester's re report on the future of social selling. Go to Forbes.com and get access to um, Jim Keenan's um, uh, report that shows 78% of reps who use social selling outperform their non-social selling peers. So that's step number one. That, that is proving that social selling works as it relates to building pipeline and driving revenue. So go get educated on, on, on the, the data. Then, as you start to put together your plan, remember to start with the mindset shift of educating your people on the why and the what before you teach them the how. And what I really <laughs> recommend is collaboration. Internal collaboration to get the buzz and the energy and the excitement around the initiative going and using part of our accreditation program at Oracle is to show adoption of our internal Oracle social network. That's our, that's our version of chatter. Um, and so we require usage of our internal collaboration tool to get the social selling resources and to also get accreditation for um, their third level social selling accreditation. Finally, build in a reward system. So you've got to change your metrics, right? You can't just keep measuring dials and connects and meetings. You've got to change your metrics. Now change your metrics and then build in some gamification. Make it fun. Make it competitive. Give people badges. You know, give them, like, do giveaways. Do Starbucks gift cards. Coffee is for closers. Okay, so we, we're not going to totally get away from that, right? But I think coffee is for connectors because it's always be connecting. Coffee is for connectors because your connections lead to the close. So I hope that that helps. There's a lot of resources out there on the metrics that it works. Then think about the strategy around changing the mindset, improving the skill set, and adding on the enabling toolkit because it's your beliefs that lead to your behaviors. And, and, and if you don't do it, y'all crazy. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Ken, can I just add to that? That was fantastic about the gamification and the rewards. And I'll tell you a client's success story of exactly what they're doing. Um, the reality is the opportunity cost of not being on a paid LinkedIn account is silly. I mean, it's it starts at $25 a month. It's the cost of sandwich and a Coke, right? So at the end of the day, uh, a client of ours, Exo Communications, Ronan Keen, made a simple deal with his sales reps, 300 sales reps. If you can demonstrate to me in a week that you're doing something with social selling and especially in his uh, program it was driving one opportunity through social selling we will pay for your LinkedIn premium account 50 percent of their team did it within one week it was a great reward they all wanted a premium account they just needed a reason to get a premium account so and this can work the same uh, if you're already premium users you can move to sales navigator whatever it is but uh, it was a simple task uh, that w that worked right so that is beautiful. I love it. Guys, this spawned a lot of ideas, even from this hangout that we need to do together, the three of us. Here's what I'm going to ask my team to do. We're going to transcribe this hangout. We're going to put it out on a blog so they have the copy with all these cool ideas. We're going to embed a link to it. And then I'm going to ask both of you, if you're willing, to do a guest blog follow-up so that you can really organize those thoughts. We barely scratched the surface today, didn't we? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Might do a video for the video. <laughs> yeah, we'll do it, whatever it takes. <laughs> but uh, uh, 220, 221, whatever it takes. Anyway, thank you, thank you. This is this is exciting. We're gonna we're gonna come back because I want to do this same thing. I mean, we, we we loved LinkedIn today. It was awesome. I want to do the same thing for some of the other social media and go deep. But, but frankly, the problem with social selling is we don't know how to do it. Is that fair to say? Yes. Absolutely. Okay, so let's learn everybody. And here's my challenge. I'm only going to give one piece of advice to all of us, and that is this. And this is for the managers. Learn to do it yourself. Okay? Brilliant. A manager tells everybody else what to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A leader shows them. Yes. Thanks, everybody. Fantastic. We'll again, same uh, bat channel, same bat time next Friday. Talk to you soon. Thank you, you everybody, for tuning in. Jill, thank you for coming. Jamie, thank you so much for tuning in. And Ken, thanks for hosting this. 
We'll see you guys. Keep your questions going with the hashtag uh, Ken's Hangout, and we'll see you guys next Friday. Have a good one. Thank you. Take care.